And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Hello, I'm National Weather Service meteorologist Peter Chan with your Alaska Aviation Weather Outlook. It is Thursday, April 18th, and this outlook is for Friday into Saturday. Now, starting out on this Thursday, we have low pressure that's sitting down here in the North Pacific. An impulse of energy is already lifted northward, a secondary low crossing right now up at least as of, of uh, late morning. Uh, Thursday, passing through the Bering Strait, it'll go just east of uh, Wrangell Island as we go through uh, later this Thursday. By Friday morning, though, we still have low pressure that's going to sit and spin here the next couple of days with a front arcing out ahead of it. And this front has a long feed of moisture, an atmospheric river that has origins all the way down into the uh, subtropical regions of the North Pacific. But a big ridge of high pressure, not just uh, in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere, but at the surface is bringing VFR conditions across much of the interior, uh, central eastern interior, southeast mainland across uh, the panhandle. And this is going to hold at least uh, through Saturday. This frontal system here, this feed of moisture will start to break down, but not really until later Friday or Saturday. And eventually that could spread some light showers along the Gulf Coast into the panhandle later this weekend by the time we get into uh, Sunday, especially afternoon, evening. But otherwise, Friday afternoon, we see conditions improve across much of the mainland of VFR. Again, the panhandle enjoying sunshine, light winds, temperatures 50s and 60s. Uh, even some isolated 60 degree readings possible around Fairbanks going up the Tanana uh, Valley. So very fine early spring weather in this area. Still showers, uh, some of them heavier coming up the upslope of the mountains there, Kodiak Island, Eastern Kenai down and in along areas of the Southwest. The strong winds that we're currently getting Thursday uh, still will be in place, but not as strong. Uh, we've had some storm force winds, entrance of Cook Inlet around the Lake Iliamna region as of this Thursday, but those will be coming down. Still MVFR along the west coast as we have a lingering boundary that used to be a stationary front will just kind of trough out. Still though, with this frontal boundary feed of moisture, IFR along it across the western gulf uh, into the entrance of Cook Inlet north side of Kodiak Island along the eastern Kenai, areas of IFR off of the Arctic coast and then from around Nunavik Island over to St. Matthew. And into Saturday afternoon, again, still VFR conditions across much of the mainland interior and across the panhandle. Uh, and VFR conditions anticipated areas of uh, lower Cook Inlet, Kodiak Island, southwest with pockets of IFR from around Wainwright down to Point Hope, as well as around uh, St. Lawrence Island and from Nunavik Island to just off of Bristol Bay. So past conditions for Friday, they're across uh, much of the Brooks Range, at least the central eastern Brooks Range, Anatovic Pass and Attigan Pass, VFR. VFR coming down across the uh, Yukon uh, River Valley, Tanana Valleys across much of the uh, interior. As we get down to the west arm of the Alaska Range, there could be MVFR conditions at least early Friday giving way to VFR, even some IFR south of Lake Clark early Friday morning. And then as we uh, go up along toward the central Alaska range, still some MVFR around Rainy Pass in the morning, giving way to VFR. But Windy Pass eastward along that uh, rest of the Alaska range, VFR conditions on Friday, Isabel, as well as Mentasta Passes, then dropping south across the Copper River Basin, VFR conditions there through Tanita Pass. And even along the uh, uh, Gulf Coast there in the vicinity of Prince William Sound, we expect VFR conditions at Portage Pass eastward through Yakutat into the northern panhandle, Chilkoot and White, VFR, VFR also across the rest of the central and southern uh, panhandle. Freezing levels at the surface come Friday morning, kind of meander through the uh, central bearing coming up into the southwest coast, uh, lower Yukon, and then riding up to Kotzebue Sound, then dropping back down across uh, parts of the interior into the outer, outer uh, uh, channels here, or inner channels, the intercoastal mountains there of British Columbia. Notice though, because of this warm ridge of high pressure over Northwest Canada, that uh, the ridge extends into the central interior, we find freezing levels aloft as high as 6,000 feet plus uh, up through areas of the, uh, especially Yukon, Upper Yukon Valley, and as high as 8,000 feet there in Northwest Canada. So uh, again, a warm dome of air, but with this kind of pattern, you have uh, at what, what we call 
uh, it's, it's blocked. It's not going to change. That ridge is going to hold. So we have the feed of moisture coming way down from the subtropics of the North Pacific into the Gulf, Western Gulf, then coming up along the west side of the mainland, especially the west coast. We could find some icing, moderate icing above 6,000 feet there in the Western Gulf, especially the southern side of the Kenai, northern parts of uh, uh, Kodiak Island, then extending inland uh, west of the Alaska Range uh, in parts of the southwest interior above 5,000 feet, falling off to say maybe around 4,000 feet Kotzebue Sound and then areas further north along uh, and just west there of Kiadvik above uh, 3,000 feet. Also a pocket out here above 8,000 feet uh, back to the uh, southwest of the western Aleutians. So here's the uh, jet stream level, 30,000 feet. We find uh, a ridge of high pressure, actually a high center here over northwest Canada. And then the circulation, southeasterly flow coming up out of the North Pacific into the Western Gulf and then along the west side of the state, south and then southwest winds there in the Chukchi Sea. Mid-level winds, 9,000 feet, a broad belt of 40 to as high as 50, 60 knots centered around Cook Inlet, the entrance there, as well as the lower western arm of the Alaska Range. That's where some of the strongest southeasterly flow will be found at mid-levels. And then at 3,000 feet, just above the surface, we find 40 to as high as 50, 55 knot winds, the strongest being right uh, there at the entrance of Cook Inlet across Lake Iliamna. So this region is where you're going to find the severe turbulence from the surface to at least 4,000 feet, even, even a bit higher in some of the mountainous terrain. So expect that to continue on Friday. We have a broad area of moderate turbulence that extends from the western Gulf across the Kenai Cook Inlet back through the southwest interior, and then it narrows up along uh, the west coast areas of Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula, on up toward the far western portion of the Brooks Range, including uh, points uh, Hope and up toward Cape Lisburn, surface to 4,000 feet. And then in this section of the Alaska Range, uh, central and western Alaska Range, uh, we expect there could be moderate turbulence surface to 10,000 feet on Friday.